Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this channel, we will learn how to program in SAS. I plan to present topics on data step programming and SAS macro language, as well as other interesting topics in SAS. If there are some specific topics that you would like to learn, please leave a comment. I hope you all enjoy watching this video. We start with data step programming. The contents of these video series on data step are based on my book, Handbook of SAS Data Step Programming. The course-related materials can be downloaded from the publisher's website, which includes all the data sets used in the book, and all the programs, exercises, and solutions. The link is provided below. The contents of Chapter 1, Introduction to SAS, are presented in three videos. In this video, we will focus on the first three sections, including understanding the SAS program and language, reading data into SAS, and creating and modifying variables. A SAS program can consist of one or more data steps and or proc steps, which can be in any sequence. In this program, we create a SAS data set by reading a text file. Then we use proc print to print the data, and use proc contents to list the descriptor portion of the data. In the end, proc freak creates a frequency table for the variable preg. The building blocks of the data and proc steps are statements. A statement is made up of a series of elements, such as names, operators, operands, etc. Each statement must end with a semicolon. The statements in the data step serve as an instruction to read data, create a new data set, or perform data manipulation. Statements in the proc step are used to analyze data, or create reports. In addition to statements, there are other types of SAS language elements, such as data set options, expressions, formats, and in formats. These language elements are mostly used within a statement, and will be introduced when they are used within a certain SAS statement throughout the course. The starting point for most projects is reading data into the SAS system. The most frequently used input file formats are SAS data sets, raw text files, and Excel spreadsheets. A SAS data set is often created by reading, extracting, or combining data from different types of files. Once a SAS data set is created, we tend to save it as a permanent file. Not only is rereading a SAS data set simple, but it is easier to manage than other types of file formats. A SAS data file contains data and the descriptor information. In SAS, there are two types of variables, character and numeric. Character variables can contain alphanumeric values, or special characters. The missing values are presented as blanks. Numeric variables can contain floating point numbers. Periods are used to represent missing numeric values. Furthermore, date and time values are also considered numeric values. The descriptor information of a data set includes information about the creation date of the data set, the number of observations, and the attributes of each variable, such as a variable's name, length, type, label, format, informat, etc. In SAS, the directory that stores SAS data sets is referred to as a library. To access or create a SAS file in a library, we need to begin with the libname statement. In the libname statement, libref is the logical library name, while SAS library is the physical location of the file folder. There are three rules for naming libref. The starting position begins with either an underscore or a letter. The non-starting position can contain an underscore, letters, and numbers. The length of the libref cannot be more than 8 characters. The basic idea of using the lib name statement is associating a logical SAS library name, libref, with the directory path, in which permanent SAS data sets are stored. Thus, in our program, instead of referring to the file's directory with a complete path name, we will use libref. For example, in this lib name statement, the libref is SAS lib. It is associated with the physical location, that is enclosed in a pair of quotation marks. LibName is a global statement. A global statement can be placed outside the data, or proc steps. Being global in this situation means that the name of the library, libref, is only in effect, until you change it, cancel it, or terminate your current SAS session. The contents of the library always exist, unless you delete them. To access the data set in a permanent library, we need to use a two-level name. The first component of the two-level name is the library name, 
and the second component is the name of the SAS dataset. The two names are separated by a period. The rules for naming a file name are like the rules for naming the Libref, except that the number of characters in the name cannot be more than 32. A SAS dataset can be stored in either a permanent or a temporary library. The work library is a temporary library for storing temporary SAS files. It is automatically created when you start your SAS session. All files that are stored in the work library are deleted when the current session terminates. You can refer to the dataset that is stored in the work library by using either a single level name or a two level name. However, to refer to a dataset that is stored in the permanent library, you must always use a two level name. To read a SAS dataset, we need to use at least three statements. In the data statement, output dataset name is the name of the dataset that we are creating. The input dataset name in the set statement is the name of the dataset that we are reading. The run statement is used to execute the previously entered statements. This program creates two SAS datasets by reading noise dataset from the SAS lib library. The first data step creates a temporary dataset, noise1, that is stored in the library work. The second data step creates a permanent dataset, noise1, that is stored in the desktop library. Notice that both datasets that are being created have the same dataset names, but are stored in different libraries. This program also utilizes two types of comment statements. The comment statements in green color provide further explanation of the program. Once a program is submitted, the first thing that you should check is the SAS log, that is generated from the submitted SAS code. The SAS log often contains information about submitted programs, including warning or error messages. For example, the SAS log from program 1.1 contains the message about the number of observations that are being read from the noise data set, the number of observations and variables in the output data sets, and data step computing times. Now, let's talk about reading the raw data file. A raw data file with fixed fields means that the values of the variables occupy the same location for all the observations. For example, the hearing text file contains variables in the fixed fields. To read a text file, we need to use the infile statement. File specification is used to specify the location of the input data. The OBS option is used to specify the first number of records to be read. This option is useful for reading a data set with many observations. For example, you can read the first few observations to verify if the data is being read correctly, before continuing to read the entire data set. Once the file location is identified from the infile statement, we need to use the input statement to read the text file. In SAS, there are four types of input methods, column, formatted, list, and named input methods. In this section, only the column input method is presented. The expansion of this topic, along with other input methods are presented in Chapter 8. You can use the column input method to read raw data that contains variables, in a fixed field with character, or standard numeric values. The standard numeric data values include numbers, decimal points, numbers in scientific notations, and plus or minus signs. Non-standard numeric data can include date and time values, fractions, integers, real binary numbers in hexadecimal forms, and values that contain special characters, such as percent sign, dollar sign, and comma. In the input statement, variable is the name of the variable that you are creating. The naming convention for the variable is the same as the rules for naming a SAS dataset. The dollar sign is used when creating a character variable. Start column and end column are the starting and ending positions of the input values. End column is optional if the variable value only occupies one field. For example, this program reads the hearing text file by using the column input method. It starts with the data step to name an output SAS dataset, hearing. Since this is a two-level name, hearing is stored in the work library. The second statement, the infile statement, identifies the location of the external text file. The input statement reads the data by using the column input method. Lastly, the run statement executes all the previous statements. For a data set with a small number of observations and variables, we can enter the data directly into the data step by using the data line statement. When reading data directly from the data step, we need to place the data line statement in the last statement of the data step, 
and enter the data immediately after the data line statement. In the end, we need to write a single semicolon, which is the null statement, to indicate the end of the input data. After data is read into the SAS, a common task is to create or modify existing variables from the input data. This section covers creating variables by using the assignment statement and introduces how to create variables conditionally. Conditionally creating variables will be further discussed in Chapter 2. In the assignment statement, variable is either a new or existing variable, and expression is any valid SAS expression. The purpose of using an expression in a SAS statement is to create variables, assign values, perform calculations, transform variables, and or perform conditional processing. All expressions will return a result with a character, numeric, or Boolean value. An expression is formed by a sequence of operands and operators. Operands are either constants or variables. Operators include symbols for arithmetic calculations, comparisons, logical operations, SAS functions, or grouping parentheses. There are three types of operators, arithmetic, comparison, and logical operators. Comparison operators are often used with if-then slash else statements. The use of comparison operators is for comparison or calculation purposes between two variables, constants, or expressions. If the comparison is true, the result is returned with 1, otherwise, the result is returned with 0. An expression can be categorized into simple, compound, and were expressions. A simple expression can contain no more than one operator, while a compound expression can contain more than one. We can connect one or more simple expressions with logical operators to form a compound expression. A SAS function can also be considered an operator, since a function performs a certain type of calculation, and returns a value. More details about SAS functions are discussed in Chapter 9. We can use SAS functions in data step statements, or a where expression. For example, to calculate the sum of a list of numeric variables, we can use the sum function. Program 1.4 reads five observations by using the data line statement and creates two variables, score sum 1 and score sum 2. Score sum 1 and score sum 2 are created by using the plus operator and the sum function, respectively. When adding two or more variables, the sum function treats the missing values as zero, hence, the resulting value will not be missing. However, calculations that result by using the arithmetic operator will result in a missing value if any operand contains a missing value for an observation. Here's the printed result from PROC PRINT. As you can see that there are missing values in the score SOM1 variables due to the use of the plus operators in the assignment statement. In some situations, we need to create variables conditionally, which can be done by using the if-then statement. This topic is discussed in detail in Chapter 2. If the expression is evaluated to be true, the statement after the keyword then is executed for observations that satisfy the condition. If the expression is evaluated to be false, the statement after the keyword else is executed, if there is one. Suppose that we would like to create a variable, named over 10k. If income is greater than 10,000, over 10k will be assigned to 1, otherwise, over 10k will be assigned to 0. There are multiple ways of creating this variable. For example, these two statements are legitimate, however, the second statement is executed even if the condition in the first statement is evaluated to be true. A more efficient way is to add an else statement instead of using two if-then statements. By adding the else statement, if the condition in the if statement is evaluated to be true, the second statement will not be processed. In SAS, a missing value is the smallest value. In this example, if the income variable contains any missing values, the observations with the missing values will be assigned to zero for the over 10k variable. We will discuss how best to handle missing values when creating variables in Chapter 2. Now, let's review what we've learned so far. In this section, we've learned how to write simple SAS data step programs. The building blocks of a SAS data step are statements. One of the most common mistakes to create a statement is missing the semicolon at the end of the statement. We also learned how to create a SAS data set by either reading in a raw data set, or a SAS data set. To read a raw data set, we need to use infile and input statement in the data step. On the other hand, to read a SAS data set, we use the set statement. Lastly, 
we learned how to create variables by using an assignment statement, or an if-then statement. In the next video, we will go over some SAS-based procedures, which is the second part of introduction to SAS. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to get new video updates.